Hello, welcome to another Incipia app marketing session. Today's topic is how to set up a search ads campaign. So to set up a search, camp, search ads campaign, go to app.searchads.apple.com up here, and then sign into your developer account and select an app that you are assigned to. Uh, you can't show ads for anything other than apps that you are a member of their team. Uh, and to back up one second, search ads are Apple's search advertising platform that allow you to show ads in the App Store. So similar to Universal Campaigns and AdWords, uh, you can show ads to people searching things, keywords, in the App Store now. So the first step is to specify a campaign name. So let's say productivity <laughs> keywords. Um, in this campaign, we're going to be using keywords that are related to productivity searches. And once you specify a campaign name, then you specify a budget, and you can say a daily spend. So your budget is your overall budget. How much are you going to allocate to this campaign overall? And your daily spend is saying, Apple, don't spend more than this amount of money per day. So with these two settings, we would expect about 10 days worth of spend, $10 each day for 10 days for $100 total. Uh, campaign negative keywords, we will dive into negative keywords and how to optimize a search ad campaign in future videos, but negative keywords uh, in brief are a way for you to specify keywords that you don't want to show ads for uh, again. So let's say that we saw a keyword that somebody searched and we spent $30 on that keyword and nobody went and installed after clicking into your app listing. We would probably add that keyword as a negative keyword here. And the difference between campaign negative keywords and ad group negative keywords is that a campaign holds multiple ad groups. Ad groups are where you specify your targeting uh, like keywords or uh, location, demographics, and you can have multiple ad groups in a campaign. For example, here we have productivity keywords as our campaign name, and as one ad group we may say to-do list keywords, and another we may say task list keywords. So if you specify a campaign level negative keyword, then this, these negative keywords will apply to every single ad group in the campaign. But if you specify an ad group level negative keyword, then that negative keyword will only apply to the ad group that we specified it for, which could be to-do list keywords. You, again, we'll go over optimizing for negative keywords and, and keywords and ad groups in future videos, but just know that campaign holds multiple ad groups and you can specify negative keywords at the campaign or ad group level. So here we can set a specific device. So we're going to optimize for iPhone specific devices. Um, and you can see that here's an example of what your ad could look like. Now, right now, Apple's not allowing a lot of creative leeway and control over how your ads look. They're pulling information from our app listing, like our screenshots, um, our icon, and our title. You can see that search ads will appear in a few different ways in, in uh, a device search. Here's one that's a little smaller, it's only got the icon title and a bit of the description. Here's another one where the icon is a little larger um, and you have the reviews, number of reviews and review count here. And then here's one that includes your screenshots but no text. So currently the best way to optimize your search ads will be to make sure that your app listing is as appealing as possible because the search ads will pull information from our app listing. It'll pull screenshots, it'll pull our uh, a bit of our description. Uh, it's likely that Apple may allow some more control over how ads are created or which, uh, which layout you show ads for, but currently the way that ads look is um, controlled by Apple's algorithm. So again, we're only showing to iPhones. You can set an ad schedule uh, or a specific end date for your ad group. So let's say that we only want to show ads on Saturdays and Sundays because our conversion rate is the best then. Then we can specify we can specify that we only want to show on Sundays and Saturdays or Sundays and Saturdays. 
And if you want to show ads all the time, then you can just delete and leave this blank. Max CPT bid is a required item here. That's saying uh, the maximum amount that you're willing to pay per tap or click. It's essentially a cost per click. Um, search ads, you are only charged when somebody actually clicks into your product page listing. So if you show an ad that's just an ad impression, you won't pay anything. But once somebody actually clicks on your ad and goes into your product page, that's when you pay something. And the CPT is how much you're willing to pay for somebody to click on your ad on average. So let's say 50 cents. This means that we're willing to pay 50 cents for everyone who clicks on our ad. Now, keep in mind that search ads operate on an auction basis, which means that we're competing with everyone else who is trying to show ads for the same keywords and searches. So if somebody else is willing to pay a dollar, but we're only willing to pay 50 cents, then that other person, that other advertiser, is more, much, more, much more likely to show an ad instead of us because they're willing to pay Apple more for that placement. So if you set up search ads and you're not getting a lot of impressions, consider raising your max CPT bid. CPA goal is optional and it's a little more advanced. This is telling Apple or Apple's ad serving algor algorithm rather um, what you want it to optimize for in terms of a cost per acquisition or install. So if we say $2 then we're telling Apple, do your magic and try to get installs for, on average, $2 per install for us. Like the Mac CBT, or unlike the Mac CBT, this is not a, a guaranteed thing. We will never pay more than $0.50 cents per tap if we specify this here. But because CPA goal is optional, uh, it's possible that we will pay more than $2 per install. We're just telling Apple, try to get us $2 per install. So it's possible that Apple will release uh, a manual CPA goal like Facebook ads, where if you get enough conversions coming through, um, you can specify a specific CPA that you will only pay. Uh, but currently, the only guaranteed um, cost mechanic is the CPT. Search match is uh, Apple's new match type. That's kind of interesting. What this is and what it does is it will look at the your app listing, such as uh, your title, your keywords, possibly a couple other places of information, and look for those keywords uh, that people are searching. So basically, you don't have to do any effort or find any keywords and add them here. You can say, Apple, we've already specified in our app listing what keywords we're relevant for go show ads for people that search keywords that are relevant for those. Or go look at other apps that are similar to ours, such as other productivity apps, uh, competitors, and then figure out what keywords people search and then that lead them to download a productivity app and show our ads for those keywords. So this, as it says, automatically does matching for you. You don't really have, you don't have any control over it other than your max cost per tap but it does take a lot of optimization work off of your shoulders. However, again, it gives you less control uh, over what you're showing ads for. So our recommendation would be to create a different campaign or at least a different ad group that only uses search match and one that, does use, it, that doesn't use search match and uses keywords, uh, but don't put keywords and search match together in the same ad group because you may want to use a lower bid or possibly a higher bid depending on how search match performs and you don't want to mix your bid for search match with keywords. Um, so keywords, here you can specify specific keywords or terms that people search be in order to show an ad. So we have a productivity uh, campaign and this is the to-do list ad group in this campaign. So we're going to want to find to do related keywords to bid on. So to do, <laughs> and Apple's interface is, um, ah, here we go, it's already been added. Apple's interface will take a little bit of getting used to and they'll um, come up with some improvements over time. But uh, 
you search for keywords here and then you add them and here are all the keywords that you have uh, for this ad group. So here again we have our bid being um, our ad group default max CPT being applied to all these keywords because we haven't specified the bid for them. But you can change the bid for certain keywords. So let's say for app we know that let's say that we know people that search app are much more likely to install the conversion rates better so we're willing to pay a little more but for to do people are just kind of looking around uh, our map their the conversion rate for people searching to do may not be as high so we're not willing to pay as much uh, search popularity is a kind of wonky way to figure out which keywords have more volume than others apple is, seems to be guarding monthly search data more closely than expected so there's no hard data point to say this equates to 10,000 searches a month month and this equates to 20,000 searches a month all we have for now is this search popularity bar um, what we also have here is match type so Apple will be supporting exact and broad match exact match means that we and you can see the brackets here are applied this is similar uh, syntax to AdWords where brackets equate to exact match. AdWords also has phrase match which uses quotes and then no syntax means broad match. So the difference between exact and broad match is that exact match m requires the keyword that you're bidding on to be searched exactly by user before you show an ad. So if somebody types in to-do list app then we'll show an ad. But if we're using exact match and somebody types in to do list uh, iPhone app, then we will not show an ad because to do list iPhone app does not match exactly to our keyword. Broad match will use Apple's algorithm to determine which searches are relevant to the keyword you're bidding on. So we could show an ad for to do list iPhone app, we could show an ad for to do for this keyword, we could show an ad for uh, to do daily planner app for iPhone. Apple's algorithm will determine what, how broad of a match is relevant for your, your bidded keyword. Broad matches will have lower conversion rate, but much more volume. Exact matches will have much less volume because it, you require an exact match, but much higher conversion rates. Uh, it's recommended to, for keywords that you care about, use both exact and broad match, and then vary your bid for, uh, for those different match types. So for exact match, we're probably willing to pay more. And for the broad match, we're probably willing to pay less because the conversion rate is different. And again, here we have uh, ad group level negative keywords. Now we have customer types. So you can specify only people that have not downloaded your app before, um, or you can specify people that have downloaded, that have downloaded your app, which is a retargeting campaign, uh, people that have downloaded your other apps, or everyone. So regardless of whether they have or have not downloaded your app or other apps. This is the default and most likely the most popular because you're getting fresh installs, people that have not downloaded your app before you're acquiring them. It is useful to target people who have downloaded your app already in order to re-engage them, get, to the com get them to come back and improve your retention numbers. However, right as it is right here it's it doesn't look like we're able to show ads only to people who have become unengaged so you, if you are a select this option you may show ads to people that have used your app yesterday and don't need to see an ad um, so until apple offers more customization around retargeting um, this may not be as valuable an option you can specify demographics so gender age range um, so we can say 18 to 65 plus or all ages locations currently search ads are only available in the US as you can see storefronts uh, only US here but you can specify a specific city or a state to show ads to then once you're all set you can click start campaign and if there are any errors Apple won't let you proceed until they're fixed so if you didn't for example enter in a max CBT then Apple will require you to do that. So that's that's it. And then you'll have your spend, your average cost per install, 
Uh, here, your average cost per click or tap, total number impression, uh, taps or clicks, conversions, which it installs, um, and then tap through rate. So that's the conversion rate. Uh, so this is conversions or installs divided by taps. And it's funny that Apple is using their, their own um, terminology, but it equates uh, essentially to installs and clicks. So currently, this it's uh, September 29th, and app search ads don't go live until October 5th. So we're, if you set them up between this time and the 5th, then you're going to get this system held message. Um, but that's it. So I'll show you just briefly how easy it is to very, very quickly create an, app, an ad. We'll use TweetMap. Um, let's say... Let's just say uh, search search match campaign. Our budget is fifty dollars. We're going to spend five dollars per day. Ad group name is search match, and we're going to say by search match we mean um, only use search match, and we're not going to use any keywords. Our max bid is going to be one dollar, and everything else is fine. And now start campaign. So really, you can start these campaigns up in a snap. Um, they may not do as well because you haven't customized them as much, but these uh, campaigns are very easy to set up. So that's it. Uh, stay tuned to our YouTube channel for more videos on search ads. Uh, go to insipia.co to uh, check out our website and see what sorts of uh, work we do. We do app design, development, and marketing. Uh, we manage search ad campaigns now and App Store optimization, check out our blog where we write a lot of posts that explain uh, topics across design, development, and marketing, uh, and follow us on Twitter. All right, thanks.